Hello science class. In today's lesson we're going to talk about DNA replication as our second lesson in our DNA unit. So let's get going. So here is an overview of our double helix of our DNA structure. You can see we have our backbones which is called a sugar phosphate backbone. So what sugar is in DNA? deoxyribose, right? Deoxyribose sugar and phosphate backbone. And here's our sugar, and here's our phosphate. And if we have a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base, we get a nucleotide. And we have these nitrogen bases. There's four of them, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And as a review of yesterday, you'll remember that C always bear, pairs with G, and A always pairs with T. So C always goes with G, A always goes with T. And finally, the pairing that occurs between these, how these guys actually connect, the adenine and the thymine, or the cytosine and guanine, they pair via hydrogen bonds. Okay, so again, that's just a review of the structure of DNA. So what exactly is DNA replication? Well, it is the process of making a copy of DNA. Not that complicated. Replication means copy. So when we talk about DNA replication, we're talking about making a copy of DNA. Why is DNA replication important for cells in multicellular organisms? Well, again, if we don't have replication, we would not have cell division. So we need replication because it allows our cells to divide, which forms cells that are genetically identical to the original. So if we did not have DNA replication, we could not have multicellular organisms because our cells would never divide. So when does DNA replication occur? If you look closely at this image down here, you will see an image of the cell cycle. Now don't get too intimidated by the cell cycle because we are going through that in detail in a future lesson. This is just sort of a preview of the cell cycle. So DNA replication occurs in this phase, this yellow phase here in this diagram, and that is what we like to call the S phase. So the only phase you need to worry about right now in this entire cell cycle is the S phase. That is DNA replication phase, okay? So remember S phase for DNA replication. This is just an image I wanted to throw in here of DNA replication to kind of give you an initial primer of what's going on. The replication actually occurs via this enzyme, DNA polymerase, and we have another enzyme that will come through first, which we will talk about on the next slide, but its name is helicase. And helicase unzips the DNA strands. DNA polymerase comes through and adds in and fills in the corresponding pair bonds, which again we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, and then that's how we get DNA replication. So important enzyme number one and that is helicase. Helicase unwinds DNA at the replication fork. So think of helicase as a zipper. If you had DNA and it was straightened out, now we know that DNA is curly like this. That's what gets it that helix structure. But if DNA were, whoop, was a ladder like this, which it kind of is because remember the support structures, these portions are made up of uh, deoxyribose sugar and phosphate groups and the rungs are made up of the bases. Helicase is a little enzyme that comes in like a zipper and breaks all of these hydrogen bonds, just like that. And that gives us two individual strands. DNA polymerase is our second important enzyme and it is the principal enzyme involved in DNA replication. What it does is it adds nucleotides to our growing strand of DNA 
and proofreads the new strand of DNA to make sure there were no errors. When we do have errors in our DNA, and it, they do occur, those are called mutations. Okay, so when we have errors or changes in our DNA replication, that is what is called mutations. And here's a picture of our zipper enzyme, helicase. So helicase is our zipper. And you can see this was our original DNA strand right here. And helicase is coming down the pipe, down the DNA strand just like that. And it's unzipping. And you can see how we have our black strand here, which is called our leading strand. And we have our lagging strand, which is our green strand. That's the green strand coming down. And helicase is unzipping it. We then have two what are called semi-conservative new DNA strands or daughter DNA strands. So what is semi-conservative? Semi-conservative is where each daughter DNA strand contains one strand from the parent and one that is newly synthesized. So you can see that over here we've got our old strand, our original strand that was split apart by helicase and our new strand which was created by this yellow ring which is DNA polymerase. When we have up here we, our original strand is this black strand and our new strand that's being filled in is the green strand. Okay, So you can see in our two daughter cells, so here's our first daughter, cell, our first daughter DNA and our second daughter DNA, our offspring or, or complementary copy of it we have one of the original strands and a new strand that combine to make our helix or our full ladder. And then over here we have, again, this was part of the original and then new. All right, so semi-conservative just means that each copy contains one leg of the DNA that was, that was originally there and one that was added on to it. There are six steps in DNA replication. And I'll go through each of these steps and I've got a little visual to the side. I also have a review of it and then we'll have a video of it. So hopefully by the end of the next few slides, you'll fully understand all six steps in DNA replication. Step one is where helicase comes through this direction and breaks apart all those hydrogen bonds. Step two, there is an abundant supply of nucleotides in the nucleus for the formation of new polynucleotides, okay? So step two is just the abundance of the nucleotides in the nucleus so that DNA polymerase can attach them where they need to go. Step three is where nucleotides actually pair with the congruent base pair of the original strand. So if this was my original strand, you can see this is an A, our new sister is going to have a T coming in. So that was a floating, floating nucleotide. And now DNA polymerase is going to grab up that floater and attach it to the new A, or the original A. Okay? So step one, helicase breaks the original strand up. Step two, we notice that there's an abundant supply of nucleotides. Step three, those nucleotides start base pairing with each other. So this would pair with T, G is going to pair with C, C is going to pair with G. Okay, because remember Chargraff's rule, A always pairs with T, G always pairs with C. Step four, we have the official adjoining by DNA polymerase, so that's these blue what kind of look like guitar picks. DNA polymerase joins together the nucleotides together with strong covalent bonds to form a new complementary DNA strand. Okay? Step five, we have the double strand reforms in the uh, helix. And step six is just the final step. Okay, so two copies of the DNA molecule form behind the replication fork. And I, you can break this up into either six steps, which is what I've had you done on your homework, or you can shrink it down to three steps. So the three-step model, step one we have unzipping, Step two, we have complementary base pairing. And step three, we have our sugar phosphate backbone is formed and connecting nucleotides and two new strands. All right, and these are just, these intermediary steps are just extra detail for you. So here it is, 
once more the steps of DNA replication. We start with our parent. This is our normal DNA strand. We have unzipping by helicase. Remember we have these little nucleotides represented just by their base pairs. Remember the bases also have a sugar and also have a phosphate group. These guys are floating out there. They then find or get closer to it. That's step three. Step four for us is DNA polymerase coming in and binding. Step five is where they start getting that sugar phosphate backbone. And step six is the completed two copies from the original one. All right. And for you visual learners, I added a video here, so bear with me while this comes up. And we need to go to 140. There we go. When DNA replicates, its strands are separated by the enzyme helicase. So that is DNA helicase. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins keep the strands from reannealing. One DNA strand encodes the leading strand, which forms from its five prime to its three prime and end. And the big donut-looking thing, or uh, Cheerios-looking thing, is DNA no problem polymerase. Here, but the lagging strand presents problems. It has to form from five prime to three prime too. It forms in pieces called Okazaki fragments. You will not need to know Okazaki fragments for any test. First, an RNA also primase not lays going down an RNA into primer. lagging strand then, replication, DNA polymerase which is what the video is discussing here. DNA. The process repeats again and again. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA. Finally, DNA ligase links the Okazaki fragment. Your video secret number is 33. 33 is your video secret number for this lesson. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and I'll see you soon.